The marking and or lighting of an obstacle is done to reduce the hazard to aircraft by indicating the presence of that obstacle to the pilot. Any fixed obstacle within 3,000 metres of the inner edge of the OIS and those adjacent to the takeoff climb surface should be marked. And if the aerodrome is used at night, then they should also be illuminated. If any obstacle is illuminated by high intensity lights during the day, it need not be marked as well. Should an obstacle be masked by another, then it need not be marked or lit. Lighthouses need not be lit if they are already sufficiently lighted and do not present a hazard to aircraft. With the exception of aircraft, all vehicles and mobile objects on a movement area of an aerodrome are considered obstacles and shall be marked and lit if the aerodrome is used at night. Aircraft servicing equipment and vehicles restricted to aerodrome aprons are exempt. There are many instances of overhead wires and cables crossing rivers and valleys. When it is determined that such cables and towers pose a hazard to aircraft, then they must be marked and lit. Cables should display contrasting spherical disks of red and white or orange and white. Once identified as an obstacle needing marking because it is a hazard, it should be made conspicuous by placing a coloured marker or flag upon it. It should be coloured to show a chequered or striped pattern. Chequered patterns should be of rectangles not less than 1.5 metres or more than 3 metres square, the corners being the darkest. Stripes may also be used. The colours of the pattern should contrast each other and the background against which they will be seen. Conventionally, orange and white or red and white checkers are used. Vehicles and mobile objects should be marked by a single conspicuous colour, preferably red or green for emergency vehicles or yellow for service vehicles. Markers on fixed objects should be conspicuous and be recognisable from at least 1,000 metres away when viewed from the air and 300 metres away when seen from the ground. Their presence must not increase the hazard they mark. When marking flags are used, they shall be placed around the top of any obstacle. They will be used to mark fixed objects and be orange or red in colour, or a combination of two triangular sections, one orange, one white, or red and white. When using flags to mark mobile objects, they will be of a chequered pattern of red and white or orange and white. Low, medium or high intensity lights are used to illuminate the presence of objects that may pose an aeronautical hazard. High intensity obstacle lights are intended for use during the day as well as at night. Low intensity obstacle lights shall show steady red, be of sufficient contrast to their backgrounds to ensure conspicuity, and are generally found mounted on fixed obstacles or those with limited mobility such as air bridges. Where their use is considered to be inadequate, then medium or high intensity lighting should be considered. Medium intensity obstacle lights shall show flashing red at a rate of 20 to 60 per minute, except when they are used in conjunction with high intensity lights when they will flash white. When used in multiples, these lights shall flash in unison. Medium intensity lights can also be used either alone or in conjunction with low intensity lights to illuminate an object that is an extensive one or has a height which is above the level of the surrounding ground and is greater than 45 metres high. High intensity obstacle lights shall simultaneously flash white at a rate of 40 to 60 flashes per minute. They are used to indicate the presence of objects that have a height in excess of 150 metres above the surrounding ground and where it is deemed by aeronautical study that recognition of the obstacle by day is essential. They will be used to indicate the presence of wires and cables or the towers supporting cables that in themselves cannot be marked. Obstacle lights shall, where possible, be located as close to the top of any object as they can be and be placed to delineate the points and edges of the highest element of it. If placed on a chimney, light should not become contaminated by any emissions. 
If a high-intensity light cannot be placed on the top of an obstacle, then a medium-intensity light should be placed as high as practicable up it. Guide towers of antenna, for example. In the case of a significantly large obstacle, or extensive groups of obstacles, then top lights are to be positioned so that the general definition of the obstacle or its area is defined in relation to the highest element of it. Especially tall objects may have additional lights positioned on them. They will be equally spaced up the obstacle and visible from all angles in azimuth. Objects located beyond 15 kilometers from the aerodrome are normally only considered to be obstacles to aircraft if they exceed 150 meters in height. During the day, they are usually lit by high-intensity flashing white lights. If, however, such a display at night could dazzle the pilot, medium-intensity red lights may be substituted, either flashing or fixed. In some arrangements, the fixed red lights illuminate in a sequence. That is, the red in the middle of the obstruction lights first, to be replaced by the red at the top, which in turn is replaced by the red at the foot of the obstruction. The sequence repeats throughout the night hours. Whilst we are talking about aerodrome obstacles, you should remember that parked aircraft can be obstacles too, and should be lit either by the aircraft navigation lights, or by ancillary lighting that determines the extremities of the aeroplane. Aerodrome operators are responsible for ensuring that vehicles on the movement area are lit or marked irrespective of ownership. Whenever a vehicle is on the movement area, it must display low-intensity flashing yellow lights. Aerodrome operators are responsible for ensuring that vehicles on the movement area are lit or marked irrespective of ownership. Whenever a vehicle is on the movement area, it must display low-intensity flashing yellow lights. Emergency vehicles will show blue flashing lights when responding to an emergency, otherwise show yellow vehicle lights. Other than responding emergency vehicles or vehicles towing aircraft, vehicles will give way to aircraft. This diagram summarizes the criteria by which obstacle lights are positioned.